Oh, hi everyone. Hello. Hi. Hello, everybody. Hello. So, um, for, for those who don't know, I'm, I'm Tom, um, and um, and the uh, the other guy with the uh, the background is Carl. Hi. Um, so, so um, I'm the the founder and the developer of uh, of Telescape Live, and uh, Carl uh, also works with me. And you, if you've emailed us, you've almost certainly spoken to Carl. Um, so um, this is the the first time uh, we've done uh, done one of these. So um, have no idea how it's going to go, what we're going to do. Um, I think there's maybe too many of us to do uh, introductions for everyone. I think that might just uh, take take a bit too long. <laughs> uh, yeah. Although, uh, feel free to say hi in the chat. Yeah, uh, so if, if anyone's got any questions, um, I think the easiest way to do that, there's a, um, you should have a little um, little button at the bottom of your screen, a little reactions button. So uh, and you can use that to, uh, to do a wave or a raised hand. Yeah. And um, Carl, I'll I'll let you uh, I'll let you pick pick people, um, and uh, and then uh, and they can ask their questions. Hey, uh, so from the top, uh, I've got a, a, a hand raised from Alex Bock. Hi, Alex. Hey, hi. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, yeah. we were just curious, I guess. Um, do you guys have any sort of tentative plan as far as what you know? Like, assuming at some point this COVID stuff's going to die down. Do you have a plan on being able to like integrate any of of what folks are being able to build here into like physical rooms? Is there any? Are you looking ahead that far? You know, thoughts on that? I guess. Uh, yeah, um, I, I don't know yet. Um, I mean, at the moment, um, things are you know things are moving so quickly. Uh, people are building new kinds of things, uh, um, w working out all kinds of different types of ways to do it. Um, I uh, post pandemic, I uh, my my thoughts are I think that uh, online escape rooms are still a very useful thing because they give you a, um, a access to a much larger market, um, and I think I think there's uh, that's something that could definitely carry on running alongside uh, physical rooms. Um, whether there'll be useful sort of integrations uh, in the actual physical rooms themselves, I don't know. Um, if if we uh, that sounds really cool though, so uh, it's, I definitely wouldn't rule it out. Uh, we. Also got a question from um, Bob or Josh at Paradigm. Just yeah, hi. hi. So I got a real quick question. Uh, is there a way of sending puzzles to individual players without the other players seeing it? Um, there is not at the moment, um, but um, that's something I've been planning to add as a as a sort of a, a uh, primary feature. Uh, at, for, for a while, um, and I'm sort of considering how to do that. Uh, I have a new feature coming out next week, though, which um, is actually going to give at least one way of doing that. Um, so, um, yeah, I'll, I, I'll sort of do some demos uh, before I release it when, I, when, I, when it's ready. But um, but essentially, it will make it quite easy to kind of split up your players and, and sort of looking at different things. And once, once they're looking at different things you can reveal different different bits to them you know they'll be if they're all looking at different items um yeah but pretty similar to what uh, what our glass escapes are doing at the moment so for so, so if you've played any of their games um you can see that they kind of they split up the players but they, they do it more on a kind of honor system where they just uh where players can choose to um to go and look at the different things but yeah we're going to add some stuff so that you can enforce that if you want to if that's if that's right for your game uh, I had just another question as well, just to sure. uh, the uh, possibility of doing like a locker um, style lock, so like a spinning dial lock, um, yeah. is that going to be a possibility uh, moving forward or is there a way to, to kind of do it now that's um, a little seamless? So for, yeah, for spinning dial lock, um, you can do that using uh, the alternate images, so you can, you can do it where you basically upload different versions for each for each bit of spin and then you cycle through them. Um, we don't have any kind of uh, rotation stuff in there at the moment, although that is something we might add in the future. Okay. We've also got a question from Lorna. Hiya. Um, Hi, is I, there any other way to move around your room rather than having to click and drag? Um, we're finding it really frustrating. Yeah, so, so you're, you're talking about in the, uh, the 360 views? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So um, it, 
one thing that I, I think that 360 views can be really cool, but they're maybe not appropriate for all rooms. Um, and um, so the, there would be some options to use sort of flat images instead. Um, and again, the, the feature that I am working on right now um, is uh, intended to make that a lot easier. So right now, if you have a flat image and then you have a hotspot on that, that's meant to that's meant to take you to make meant to take you to some other bit. It has to kind of open as a separate um, a separate inventory item, or or as a set or as a pop over. And neither of those are very good. Um, so what we're going to allow is for you to click on an item, and it just changes what you're currently looking at, um, as well as giving an option for that to happen just for the one user who's currently viewing it, or for all of the users. So you've still got the option to sort of allow people to independently explore. Um, I don't know if that answers your question, or, or are you thinking more of some way of doing that within a 360 view? Well, it's more like when you're trying to look around in a 360 room, we played one last night, and you're drag clicking and dragging, and you're catching things that you're supposed to be looking at, but you're not trying to, you're trying to move mm. around the room. So maybe arrows instead. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's... Yeah, it, it would be hard for, for the 360 views just because the kind of inherent thing about them is that they is that that kind of that kind of movement. Um, I think we can probably get a little bit better at, at not having um, the hotspots capture your cursor. Um, so detecting when you're doing a drag versus when you're actually intending to click on a hotspot. We're not. Yeah, it's not. That's not as good as it could be at the moment. Listen, it's so. fab, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We've also got a, a Nick Linda, I believe, wants to ask the question. Hopefully, uh, Nick's there now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Hi. Sorry, I, I the reactions, hand raise is not one of my reaction options for some reason. Um, uh, but uh, I was wondering, like, it seems like your software is fantastic and it's improving on a daily basis. I mean, in fact, just uh, last week, I bit the bullet and, and created my own combo lock like hours before you released that update. And so, <laughs> Oh, there, sorry. So, so I spent two hours on something that probably could have done in 15, 20 minutes. But um, uh, but it's great. But the thing is, is that we're all simultaneously uh, creating our own content. And I, I would think that it would be great if there was a share, like, uh, you know, for, for these combination locks or whatever. Wouldn't it be nice if there was a library that we could just download something from? You know, is, is there a, like a user content share or something like that? Um, there, there's not the moment you um, can sort of do that because you can uh, transfer um, uh, games between people. So if you if you have someone who has something that they want to send to you, they can um, they can they can put it into its own profile and then transfer that profile to you. But I agree that a um, a library would be really good and in fact i would quite like to do some kind of sort of asset store thing where people can sell um items that they've made uh, so i should also say that there are various people at the moment who will sell you uh locks and, and other ready-made things um, sure sure i you know i i think it would be really great if we could just have a place to upload something and download and maybe mm. you, you know you only get access once you've uploaded a few things or something like that i don't know <laughs> i don't know how it would work uh you know you know i'm sort of hoping that you guys would take the lead on that and create mm. that but yeah yeah i know that's that sounds like a great idea if, uh, if there's enough interest in that so if there's enough people who would want to contribute then um as well as as well as get stuff from it then uh, that's that's definitely something we could do I see that there's a conversation in the chat uh, asking about whether it's possible to use cursor keys in 360. Um, and Alex Smith would like to ask a question too. Hi there. Yeah. Um, so one problem that our company runs into all the time is we do a lot of uh, mass drag and drops. And once they all collectively hit their snap point, it then flips to reveal an answer. Um, one problem that we're constantly running into, though, is creating that criteria is a lot of clicks and a lot of time mm. commitment. Um, so wondering if there was anything down the pipeline of maybe copying and pasting something or uh, maybe uh, a simpler, less clicky way of accomplishing such a task that maybe I'm not aware of. Yeah, no, I, I totally get that. I, um, in fact, was building a, um, a sample today uh, for a video. And uh, was yeah, made, it's sort of always acutely aware of um, of, of how um, how much effort it can be to set up really complex sets of conditions. Um, I intend to uh, to 
uh, add some kind of copy and paste definitely to, to conditions and to actions. Um, Cause yeah, I think it would be very useful to be able to just cut and paste them between items. Um, I also have plans to do um, a few things uh, with the actions themselves. So um, a lot of the, uh, most, a lot of the actions at the moment that accept one item, my intention is to make them accept multiple items. So if you, for example, wanted to show a hotspot, show a multiple hotspots, you could do a single action step and then just select all of the hotspots and that would hopefully be a little bit uh, easier. Um, the same with conditions. I, I'm intending to make a lot of the fields um, multiple uh, selection, which again, which for, for certain types of conditions will make them massively simpler. Um, but yeah, I am interested in any suggestions anyone has um, for, for working with that. Um, for, for ways of, for ways of making it uh, nicer to work with, although ideally without making it uh, harder to learn. Thank you so much. And just a quick follow up on that: Is there currently an easier, like, say, for example, I have eight hot spots, or I, sorry, I have eight snap points, and I have eight draggables, and I only want to show an answer once all eight of the draggables have gone into the correct eight hot spots. Yeah. Is there an easier way to code that that isn't uh, flip to answer if all prior seven are in correct snap points, or is that just what the slug is right now? Yeah, yeah. I mean, what, one of the things that you may already be doing, but which I would recommend is for for, for more com for complex things like that, is to put it into a code and then to call the code from each snap point rather than trying to put all of those uh, actions and conditions into each snap point. Um, that means you can kind of cut down a lot of that work by about well, how many about eight times in the in your case. I'm so sorry. When you say when you say call, uh, could you could you explain that in a different way? Um, oh, so um, so we have the codes which are um, which are usually used for the when for the mode where players can type in the codes. Um, so that's oh. the, um, you. But you can create a code with the sole intention of just uh, later triggering it. So one of the one of the actions uh, is a trigger code, and what you can use that to do is to just have a bit of reusable. Uh, so, uh, but if you've got a whole bunch of actions, you're going to want to use again and again and again. If you put them in a code, and then rather than and then you trigger that code rather than rather than separately putting in all those actions each time. Does that that make sense? That makes total sense. Thank you so much. I appreciate cool. your time. No problem. Um, question uh, hand raised from Tom Alcock. Yeah, hi. Yeah. Um, so we're currently setting up, I actually have two questions, sorry. I'm currently setting up a game in simple mode. Mm -hmm. I was wondering if there's a way at all that the players can ask for clues that are automated. Um, yeah, uh, so there's not a built-in clue system, mainly because I think that it's very, very different, the needs for, for each game. But a lot of people do build clue systems, um, and usually those take the... the the, uh, usually what you do is you put, say, like a, uh, a question mark hotspot on your items. Uh, people click that, and then it does a pop-up, which, which um, has, uh, has a clue or something. And I, I, quite often, I would recommend you start with a very vague clue, and then they can click again to get a more more of a clue and yeah you know right because uh you know you never know exactly how much uh, how much to tell them and yeah no no yeah. one wants the puzzle just solved for them but on the other hand i think it's very easy to get very frustrating when, when you're having a game that sort of uh doesn't have a a, a a human to jump in and smooth things over yeah okay um thanks for that um, my other question um you know the option that's called pop-up items which you can set when you click on a hotspot um that seems to only, you can only use that on hotspots. You can't use it on draggables or when you've triggered the code. Yeah, that's right. Um, so uh, partly that's uh, historical reasons. So that existed before the before actions did. Um, it, I intend to roll it into to actions at some point. Um, the, the, the difference it has from most existing actions is that it's a per user thing. So when, you pop it, when you're doing a pop-up, that's just popping up for that one user who, who clicked on it. Okay. Uh, whereas most things happen for all users. Uh, so we are going to add, we probably will move that to be an, be an action at some point uh, where, you, where you can specify that it's just for one user. Um, and once we've done that, then yeah, you could stick it on a, on a snap point or on a timer or, or any of the other things. Okay, that's good to know. Thank you. No problem. Um, next question from William F. Reed. Hey there. Uh, first hey. of all, Fantastic software. Thank you so much for all the hard work you put thank into you. it. 
Um, my question is fairly simple. I was curious why um, it's not possible to have hotspots in video. Um, that is purely because it's not been done yet. Um, I uh, would like to put hotspots in video, although um, I think that to be useful, they probably need to be a little bit more than just slapping some hotspots over the top in that they probably need to be able to exist for certain parts of the video and not other parts of the video. Um, another thing, that, another way that I am looking into possibly doing is uh, I might make it so that you can embed a video in say a drag drop puzzle or, a, or an image item, essentially like you embed, like you put a hotspot in at the moment. Um, and uh, yeah, if you could do that, then I think that would that would potentially be a lot more flexible um, and allow kind of hotspots and videos to to interact with each other. Okay, thanks. Um, oh, and uh, one other thing that uh, some people do at the moment is that you can use a an animated GIF as a hotspot. Yeah, I actually tried uh, importing some GIFs as an image, um, and it really seemed to bog down the system quite a bit. So uh, I didn't find that to be very. Yeah, you, you've got to be very careful. So um, it's very a, the, a GIF is not a not a fantastic file format. Um, so it's very easy to make it very very large, and then yes, yeah. your your users will be waiting a long time to see it. Um, if if you're very careful, you can you can get a little bit of movement, a little bit of stuff happening without too much of a problem. Um, yeah, the reason that GIFs are supported at the moment is just because the browser is capable of dealing with them like they were images. It's yeah, it's I. Uh, it was almost a mistake as a feature, although it's turned out to be very useful. Um, but uh, yeah, ho hopefully, uh, hopefully we will support proper videos uh, in their place at some point, which will be yeah, a lot uh, a lot smaller. <laughs> I'm gonna uh, so I'm gonna go to KW Escape, who've got their hands up. Hi there, um, Alistair did put his question in the chat, but while I'm here, I guess I'll just ask mine really quick. Um, a huge shout out to Jason at Fuzzy Logic. Um, we've played all of his games. We played a couple with Live Avatar, and now we've played the rest of them using the Telescape platform. And it's really kind of, we don't know anything about it. We're planning to maybe start. Um, and he has done a fantastic job, and it's really made me feel pretty confident that we can do this. <laughs> and um, so my question is, um, we have a room. It's uh, the game's called Twister and it has a huge trailer in it and it has three 360 degree views that players can access at all times. So right now yeah. I just have it hosted on our website, but I'm liking this Telescape platform and mm -hmm. think I want to switch over. So I'm wondering if like every other game that we've played, you get your first 360 and then when you get into the next room, you can upload the next 360 and so on. I'm wondering if you can have three of them just have like a hotspot that leads you to the next one and so on yes you can um okay. so so you, you can have a hotspot which links between the 360s um and that sort of acts um you click it and the 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 next one sort of fades in um and you can use codes to hide and show the hotspots so you can have that hotspot not available at first but then later on once they've solved whatever puzzle it is they need to solve um they can click it and uh, and and then, then it will be available Awesome. Okay. Thanks so much, guys. No problem. Thanks for the shout out too. <laughs> uh, Tom, I see. Uh, so Alistair's question was oh. asking whether there was a file size limit um, in terms of, is there a file size limit for uploading content? Yeah. Um, so that's a good question. I would, um, for, for animated GIFs, I would uh, try and keep it under a few megabyte um, anything more is just going to be just going to take a long time to download um the system doesn't really have a limit on them but uh, it, it is just all about uh your users and their poor broadband connections okay um hand up from uh daniel from help us escape hi daniel hi uh, I was just going to add uh, earlier to send, someone said something about trade and a store. Um, I'm definitely uh, have everything that anybody needs to trade with. So if you have something that you'd like to trade, I, I've either already made it or can help you out too. So cool. And I believe we, they can, uh, your website is uh, helpusescape.com. That's um, right. Yeah. yeah. We have a store that has a lot of that stuff already too. We're just waiting for the, uh, the telescape store to open up, put them up there. 
yeah ho hopefully hopefully one day and uh yeah i i, I know uh, daniel has uh, has lots of stuff uh it's, it's worth checking out um i believe uh, daniel is probably the mm -hmm. you know he's definitely the longest uh telescope user he was uh, had the very first test game on the platform thank you uh hopefully Letitia's there now yeah hi yeah. thank you hi well thank you very much i really enjoying the platform and and we think we're doing something good there um I wonder how can I learn how to make a copy of my game? So, because I want to make a game that is point and click mm -hmm. and the other one to have a game master with them. Mm -hmm. um, so I want, I want to copy the game and having the two options separated. And I don't know how to do that or how, how do I can take a lock um, program that I already did for a uh, one game and use it in another game the same oh. lock that I did. Yeah. Okay. So um, there's uh, there is a way of doing that at the moment. Um, so uh, it's not perfect yet, but uh, but often often the best way of doing this at the moment is uh, if if you go into the um, the hotspot draggable editor, um, you can select um, hotspots draggable snap points and copy them. And you can then go and paste into another into another drag into another drag drop puzzle in another game, and that will largely work. Um, what it doesn't do at the moment, it doesn't copy and paste codes, um, so it's not complete yet. But that that may that may give you a lot of what you want. So I can I can open two telescope windows and just yeah. drag something and put it in the other. Uh, well, window? if you if you select the if I let, let me let me show you. Um, you. I'm going to just get, share my screen. Um, So um, can everyone everyone see my screen now? Mm -hmm. Yes. Great. Um, so uh, let me, sorry, there we go. Open something that makes sense. Yeah. So you, uh, people, uh, eagle-eyed people might spot uh, new features here. This is actually my staging copy of the site. Uh, so I can select all of the, so I've got this puzzle here, um, which is, consists of some snap points, and some hotspots, well, some draggables. So I can select them all. Uh, I'm just, I just hit Control A there. I could have also done that. Um, and then I can hit Copy up here. Okay, I didn't see the copy. But... Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's only been available with the new, with, since the new editor, so it's a fairly, fairly recent thing. But I can go into oh. another, another um, place here, and I can go Paste, and there we go. Uh, we've, we've now pasted all the items in. Okay, thank you. Um, so yeah, that, that's that's the one way. Uh, like I said, it doesn't copy codes, or and, it, and you can't copy whole items. You're just copying hotspots from items. I think a lot of the time that that can allow you to copy the most complex parts, though. Um, we do have an alternate way, um, which is I can actually merge uh, two game profiles for you if you wanted. So if you uh, if you prepared all all of your uh, all the stuff in one profile, but wanted yeah. it merged into another one, I can I can do that for you if you if you get in thank touch. You. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. No problem. So uh, next question from Sebastian, please. Uh, yeah, just is there any current solution for games that are designed uh, either to be played competitively, like in separate rooms, and then they come together or cooperatively to where a lot of the items they have, they will not need access to until they come together, um, essentially com combining the virtual dashboard of the items they already have, but not having visibility to those items before that moment in the game. Um, so, so what you're asking is, can we sort of split up the players and show them, show them sort of different, give them different things until they come together later on? C correct. The equivalent yeah. of like a breakout room, for example, in Zoom, except it would just be you would have a telescope that m mirrored that. So that way, when you brought them back out of the breakout rooms, they would then have a shared telescope. Yeah. Um, so um, there is not that's not built in at the moment. Um, the uh, I, I know I keep on referring to the, the new feature. Um, it's always uh, always seems to be ever, most of the things people want. People want are always the, uh, the feature that's just coming, which I, I guess is a good sign. Um, but yeah, I have a, I have a new feature. I'm uh, planning, planning to release it next week. Um, it's not specifically that, um, but I think it's going to be quite good for constructing things like that. So it's, I think it will give you the tools that will allow you to make something like that. And I, my intention is to make a, um, a, uh, a, a video uh, showing, showing how to do, to do a, uh, a split team 
kind of game uh, using it. Got it. Thank you. No problem. Uh, we've got a question from Jason, please. Uh, yes, thank you so much. Hey, everyone. This Hi. Is Jason from Fuzzy Logic Escape Room in Chicago. My pronouns are he, him. Uh, so uh, my question is related to game keys specifically. So mm -hmm. I know that for many that do have standalone GM-less non-avatar games um, that are able to be completely played on their own, um, similar to Dave's, Daniel's, and a number of others, um, uh, right now, for many integrations, whether it be through Bookio, Rezova, or using the third-party integrator um, Zapier to Zapier to be able to create a booking, mm -hmm. um, and I think functionally the two operate the same. But uh, is there um, any indicator of being able to do this kind of generation for game keys? Because we know that we could set parameters like how long the link lasts and um, and perhaps how many games are created based on the quantity. Um, what, uh, what, if any, is uh, potentially coming down that pipe? Uh, yeah, that's, um, that, that definitely should, should be a thing. Um, it's, I just haven't quite connected the two threads yet. Um, sure. if, if that's something you need, um, uh, it, might, it might be good to send me an email to remind me, but let me know. Uh, that can happen fairly soon. It's, yeah, the, the, all the bits to make that happen exist. They're just not connected together right now. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, no problem. I mean, everything's been a fantastic, um, phenomenal upgrades all along the way. Um, Carl, cool. Tom, and the rest of the Buzzshot team, thank you so, so much for everything with a, thank with you. a phenomenal product. Awesome. Uh, thank you. Um, I believe we've got another hand raised from uh, Bob and Josh at Paradigm. Um, and then, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, you may not have raised your hand. Um, and then after that answer, uh, we'll head down through the questions that have been asked in the chat. Cool. Uh, one of the questions I have is, if uh, a uh, person is searching a 360 room and they say click on a candlestick, that goes into their inventory, they click on a um, mouse trap, that goes in the inventory, they click on a picture, that goes in the inventory. Is there a way that once they receive all three of those items, it gets combined? Um, yes, you could do that. Um, yeah. Uh, so what you would probably do to do that is you is you could have when when you show each of those items, uh, assuming we don't know what order they're going to be discovered in, you're going to have to put this on each one. But but each time you each one of those one of each whip. Sorry, tripping over my words. When each item is discovered, uh, you show it in the inventory. But then you can check are all the are all of the items shown in the inventory. If they are, you can hide them again and. Um, and show whatever the combined item is. Um, and the thing I was talking about earlier about using a code as just a bit of a, a, a code to, to get a little bit of reuse uh, applies here. So I would make a code that has a condition which says, are all, are all three of these items shown? And an action which says, hide them all and show the combined item. And then I would trigger that code each time one of the items is found. And that just means you don't have to repeat yourself quite as much. And then one last thing, I saw someone else ask this question earlier in the chat. Um, right now, when you have like the telescape, um, it's just the lettering with the white background. Is there any way we can switch that white background into like maybe the room they're about to enter or something? Yeah, I am. I'm planning on um, doing uh, sort of a, yes, uh, theming kind of stuff soon. Uh, that's been on my list for a while. Um, uh, the reason that I haven't done it yet is because I kind of had some plans. I kind of had some plans for some more complex stuff, and I didn't want the two to end up colliding. So I've been kind of holding off until I can do that. Um, but yes, I definitely will be doing a, a whole bunch of kind of theming options um, fairly soon. Hopefully, that's just answered uh, Benito at Durham uh, Skate Rooms uh, question two. Um, uh, Maxime, uh, Maxime. Yes. Hey, Tom. Hey. Yeah. Uh, it's Maxime from uh, Immersia in Canada. Um, I had two questions. I just wanted to follow up with uh, Jason's question about game keys because we're starting to build a sort of point and click. Uh, we've been doing live avatar for, for a little bit. And I was just wondering in terms of um, uh, if, I, if someone purchases it on my uh, booking website, um, how do I avoid having to them wait for me to send an email for the link is there like a like sort of an integration that's possible yeah um that's a good question um so there are 
various ways of doing it. So unfortunately, because everyone tends to have different their websites set up in different ways, there's not just one way I can recommend that's the way of doing this. Um, but um, the way I probably would, rec if, if you don't have kind of uh, existing stuff you have to integrate with too much, um, then, um, then using game keys, um, I think is a good way of doing it. So game keys allow you to generate, say like a hundred key, a hundred URLs uh, for people. Uh, ahead of time and then you just need something that can kind of dish those out uh, as people buy them um, and there is a bit of software called SendOwl um, that a few people are using uh, with this uh, that I would definitely recommend uh, looking at um, so it's a it's pretty cheap it's about uh, it's about $15 a month um, and uh, um, they have a feature for selling software licenses uh, where you give them a bunch of software a, a bunch of license keys and then every time someone buys it they give they give out one of those, um, so you can use that, but except with with uh, with Telescape game keys, um, and um, then you can you'll you'll need to edit their their templates so it says your here's your game rather than here's your software license, but uh, but essentially it works the same. Okay, and the, and it, does that sort of integrate with like common booking engines that we're using, or is it something completely yeah. separate that would be? Uh, so, so that that would be that would be separate. If you wanted to integrate with the with a booking system, um, it's not always the best idea for a point and click because a lot of booking systems are very tied up in the idea of a booking is for a specific time and right. all that kind of stuff, and you're kind of fighting against them a little bit. Um, but uh, but yeah, sometimes that makes sense. Um, so we we have integrations with um, with uh, Bookio and Resova. Um, so you can set it up so that when a booking is made on one of those, um, it, the booking is created in Telescape automatically, and then we send out an email from Telescape giving them their game key, or also giving them they, their login URL. Um, so so that's, that's possible. Um, and then there is also uh, Zapier. So we integrate with a, software, with a service called Zapier, um, and Zapier is um, a little bit like duct, uh, software duct tape. Um, they integrate with a bunch of people, and anyone who integrates with Zapier, you can you can take take you can take it and connect them to, some, to anyone else who integrates with Zapier, uh, which is why why we did the integration with Zapier first because by doing that we kind of give you a huge amount of flexibility. Although there is a little bit more work in setting it up because it's um, you're always kind of doing it yourself essentially. Any 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 chance you know if Shopify has any app that's also compatible? Um, so. I, I don't know off the top of my head, um, but I would imagine so. Um, okay. And whether so, and, and that there's going to be two ways you can put, you can do it with that. Uh, one is to use Zapier, um, so to to make us automatically create the game as, as soon as it's bought on on Shopify. That is probably possible. I haven't actually done it, so I, I can't say for sure. Um, yeah. But the other thing is that I would I'm almost certain there will be uh, Shopify plugins for selling software licenses. Um, which you can use with our game keys, and and in that in that system in that system it's similar to send send out. Um, it's not uh, there's not a direct connection. You have to say you have to go and generate say a hundred game keys and, and then put them in. And when you run out, they run out. You run out of stock. But um, but if you can find a, a thing that allows you to do that, there's just a lot less moving parts. You know, it's going to be a lot simpler to set up, a lot simpler to understand, and more importantly, a lot simpler to know what's wrong if it, if it doesn't work. Okay, last question, I promise. Um, yeah. Any chance um, in terms of sending out um, the uh, emails uh, with the, the link and everything, mm -hmm. any way we can send it to multiple people instead of just one? Um, there isn't at the moment. Um, it, I'm, I'm interested uh, if that's a thing that uh, the people want. Um, so, so yeah, if, if that's it, that's what, what kind of, is that just when... When multiple people book the same game, or so let's say uh, for Avatar games, um, right. one person books, but they put the emails of all the participants so that right. participants can get it at once and not put the burden, let's say, on the mm -hmm. uh, on the person booking. And it's good for marketing as well because I get emails from from all the participants at the same time. Yeah, um, no, that, that's definitely something that uh, we could support in the future, and um, that will be um, if you if you look on our uh, roadmap. Um, if you if you logged in, if you click on click on the roadmap thing at the top, um, I believe that, that that is a feature that's been requested. I, I saw it come up the other day. Yeah. Uh, 
Oh, was that you? Cool. Uh, so if anyone who's interested in that, if you go and go and vote on that feature, um, I, I don't look at that list of features all the time. Uh, a lot of the time I uh, have, have things that I know I need to be, need, know need to be done. And I just, I'm just focusing on getting those things done. But whenever I get to a stage where I'm deciding what to do next, then I, then I go and look at that list and um, yeah, uh, seeing, seeing, um, seeing votes on, on things definitely does sway me. Because if I see that a whole bunch of people say they want this, it's gonna. It's a lot more likely to get done. Cool. Thank you. Thanks a lot. No problem. Question in the chat uh, from Hourglass Escapes asking mm. whether um, will hotspots in three D models be possible? Um, I I'm, I wonder whether this is a p potential uh, time to just have a quick summary about what an iframe is, Tom. Yeah. Sure. So um, so you. It's various people um, have been using 3D models in their telescope games, uh, but we don't actually support 3D models. Uh, so how are they doing that? Um, we, we support something called an iframe, uh, which is essentially just a way of having a, an item in telescope that's just a window through to another website. Um, so it's a really flexible mechanism. Um, and uh, there are various providers of 3D, 3D viewers, uh, some of them free. Um, and uh, you can just stick one of those in in a um, in an iframe, um, use it as an item, and then that means you've now got a three D model as part of your game. Now the disadvantage of that is that uh, we can't actually see into that iframe at all. So the telescope software, um, what we can do, ends at the border of that iframe. So that means you're not going to get shared cursors in there. Um, we can't do hotspots. We can't do anything in there. All it is is something that players can go and view. Um, now. It would be nice at some point to uh, to add uh, proper support for 3D items. So that would be actually built into our software, which would mean we'd be able to do things like have hotspots on the items, share cursors, all of that kind of stuff. Um, that's not something I uh, have a date for at the moment. It's 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 one of those things that I um, I am aware of. I would like to do. Uh, I have some ideas about how to do it, but it's not become the uh, the most uh, pressing thing, and I don't think it will for a little bit. In the in the chat, uh, Isaac Smith asks basically says he wants to ask a question here about text. Um, I don't know whether he's uh, there to chat on audio. I am here. Hi, Isaac. Hi, yeah. How are you doing? Yeah, very well, thanks. I was just wondering if there's going to be in not necessarily capturing the text from users, but at least users being able to type, like if they're sharing notes with the other users, and then they don't have to write it down on a piece of paper at home. Also, we've done crosswords where we basically have to make a bunch of draggables and they drag the letters around, but if they could type the letters on would be... Yeah, um, so there are a few features that I would quite like to do that, um, that tie into that. Um, the, uh, the one that's probably the most likely to happen soon uh, is um, I would like to make it so that you can have uh, text entry boxes on the items where people can type in stuff. So um so yeah uh if rather than having you know at the moment we have the we have a code entry box in the corner if you've got that turned on uh the idea is to be able you'll be able to just embed a text entry box in in your uh item um and then have people enter whatever the code is just specifically for that bit um so so that's something um that i'm hope planning on doing fairly soon that that's in my kind of uh that's in my current set of set of things i'm working on um then um then uh, the other thing, which I, I kind of think of as fairly as a bit separate, is allowing players to to share with each other. So potentially text chat, potentially annotations, allowing them to draw on the items. Um, that's that's definitely a bit further off. Uh, that is something I would like to do, uh, but I don't have a have a like a um, I don't have a, a solid idea yet of exactly how that would work. It's just sort of something I would like to support, something in, in that kind of area at some point. That's awesome. Um, uh, I had one other question, which I think you might cool. have answered earlier. It was about, you were talking about putting multiple possibilities into like a single condition. Because right now you can't do like an or inside the and. Yes, exactly. So that's what yeah. you're saying, basically that. Yeah, yeah. So um, I tried to keep the conditions fairly simple by by making it so you have, you have your... Um, your ors and then your ands. Mm -hmm. um, and while technically you can express any condition with that, um, sometimes those conditions might end up getting very, very long. Um, yeah, you have like 20 ands, you don't want to do 20 more ands, you just want to do one or inside one of the ands. Yeah, yeah. And um, there's, 
obviously the most general way I could solve that would be to just allow you to arbitrarily nest ands and ors. Um, I'm trying to avoid doing that just because I'm I'm worried that it just makes it harder and harder to understand. You know, it becomes much more like a programming language, um, mm. which um, is is you know uh, less accessible. Um, but then the other way is a more kind of ad hoc way, which is the individual conditions I intend to add. So rather rather than saying, um, say, for example, hotspot is in snap point A, you could say one of these hotspots is in one of these snap points. Um, and I believe that that actually a lot um, for most of the cases um, that's uh, where, where we get the kind of combinatorial, combinatorial explosion at the moment, where you could get the huge amount of uh, conditions you have to put in to make it work. I think for most of those cases, that will make it much simpler to do. Great. Thank you. Uh, we've got a hand raised from Guy at EL. Cool. Hiya. Uh, just a quick one about um, the landing page or the welcome page for uh, our games. Uh, oh. we've, we're using the, the Resova and the Zoom integration extensively, mm -hmm. which is fantastic. Um, okay. But with the Zoom integration, it puts a little button on the landing page that says start Zoom. Mm -hmm. Now, with the way that we're sending out the invite emails, we've already put the Zoom invite in that email. And okay. people have already usually already connected to the same Zoom call before they connect to Telescape. Right. Is there a way to get rid of that um, that button? Because it's it's only causing confusion. At the moment. Um, so there isn't at the moment if you're using our, our Zoom integration. Um but um, did you say you were using Resova? Yeah, so people book yeah. on Resova, it goes to Telescape and then it creates a Telescape and then Telescape creates a Zoom. Yeah, um, so it might be possible, I'm just trying to remember, I know that you can do this with Bookio, but I can't remember if you can do it with, with Resova, um, but it might be possible to use uh, the uh, Resova's Bookio integration rather than Telescape's um, because that would allow you to put the, the um, Zoom details in uh, your email from from Resova, and then they don't go into the telescope stuff. Um, I, I probably will add some more some more flexibility though on uh, in terms of whether the button's displayed. Um, planning on doing some different integrations with some with different video things as well. So that will probably come along with that because there will start to be a lot more options uh, possible. So yeah, it's uh, it's not something you can do right now, but um, but it's probably something. That Cool. Okay. No, that's, that's that's interesting. So I hadn't yeah, really I hadn't you. really considered the, the, the possibility that, that someone would uh, you'd, you'd want the uh, the telescope integration, but not that part of it. But I, I see that I see how that would be useful because you can, of course, insert the the uh, Zoom details in the email that telescope sends. Yes, so, and yeah. we invite our we invite our players to have telescope on a separate device to Zoom. Um, right. Yeah. So if they if they have a, have a button on telescope that says start Zoom. Um, no one has the common sense to think, oh, I'm already on the Zoom call. I don't need to press that. Yeah, that <laughs> so may, it'd be great that to just sense. get rid of it. Cool. Okay. No, that, 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 sound, that sounds sensible. Yes, yeah. Um, yeah. Hopefully that'll be something we can do soon. Question from Sebastian, uh, hand raised. Just more of a clarifying question going back to the um, oh. options for the backgrounds in Telescape that we were talking about earlier. Um, is part of that plan to allow that to be customizable by by the user, like if we wanted to put some sort of like branding for from from our side or room be it room specific, or we will be able to do that. Do you know if that that's part would of that would be the plan? Yeah, yeah, some something along those lines. Okay, perfect. Um, just one other quick question, uh, not related to that, is sure. are there any plans of Zola integration like we have with Resolvo at the time? Uh, yes, um, that that's. That is something, uh, the more people I hear from who want that, uh, the quicker it will happen. Um, so yeah, if you are using Zola and you want integration, then uh, do let me know. Um, okay. Because uh, and that, that is one that's definitely, so um, my other software, uh, Buzzshot, uh, already integrates with Zola. So it's, um, yeah, it's definitely been one that's been on, been, been planned, uh, just hasn't happened yet because I haven't heard enough people uh, ask for it. Got it. Lorna hand raised. Hiya. Um, so Hiya. We, we have the other side of things with the Zoom integration, that when the customer logs on to Telescape, they don't realise they've logged on to Telescape and we have to go through a whole long explanation with each and every game. But um, So they don't realise they've started Telescape. They're asking right. what code they should be putting in when they get to the landing bit. Right, okay. Well, it's I know, I, 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 I 
totally understand that it's that the whole initial setup thing is is quite a hard problem because people are using various bits of software that they're maybe not very familiar with and uh, they don't know they don't know what they don't know um no. so uh, that is something that um that's probably something that would be better to have a, have a conversation about um uh sometime later um because i'd be i'm definitely interested in what what things we can do to reduce the confusion and um, and help guide people uh, to to using it as, as it's intended. Yeah. The other thing, very quickly, was when obviously when we use the buzz buzz shot at the end of it, they get their photo and they get a link mm -hmm. for them to leave reviews. Is there any yeah. plans to do something similar? Yeah. Um, so th there are a few people using buzz shot with uh, with Telescope. So you can kind of you can take a screenshot and you can put it into buzz shot. Um, it's not great at the moment because um the kind of the screenshots you take of zoom people have been all different places so it's hard to kind of do overlays that look good um and it's just generally hard to make that work really well um that's something it, i would like to that... oh sorry carry on sorry tom it's more that there's a link isn't there to send out to them to say please leave a review it's if that could be automatic at the end of the game oh yeah so uh, that is something that we do, I am planning is to start is to have an option to collect people's email addresses when they when they start playing, um, and then to do some kind of follow ups. That's that is probably something that we'll that we'll do. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Just just adding to that, Tom. So there, just so Lorna, do do you already know that there is um, a review screen at the end of the game and that you can reveal that? No. I don't know oh, if you want to explain that Tom. yes so yeah I, I absolutely should um so this is a fairly underdeveloped feature um just to, just to put that caveat on it but um we do have a yeah we have a uh, an end of game screen um so when you create a code um you can tick one of the things you can tick on the code is this code ends the game and this is another thing that should really be an action but for some historical reasons it just isn't yet um but um, you can make a code that ends the game and ending the game just pop, puts up a, a screen that says thanks for playing and then um, if you've entered a link in the game in the pro game profile settings then it will show a button that says please leave us a review which will link to wherever you, wherever you've put the link to so yeah wh whatever site you think is going to uh, a review on uh, you think the reviews are going to be most valuable to you on okay cool thank you there's a question in the chat from Crack the Code Escape Room. Um, I don't know whether they're on audio to ask the question, but uh, I can do my best to try and read it out. Sorry, Paul. So, okay. so I'll, I'll try to explain this the best I can. So I've got the 360 photo. Mm -hmm. Within the 360 photo, there are several hotspots. Right. So all of the hotspots I have, let's just say, for instance, if you're using a magnifying glass to let the players know that that is a hotspot to click on it. Yep. So those are working great, but since then I've had to add a few things, a few extra things to the 360 photo that were not there when that photo was taken. Okay. So if I want to add those as a hotspot, whenever I try to add that alternative image, like the magnifying glass, mm -hmm. um, it's not showing that over the new hotspots. It's only coming up when they hover over it. So is there a way to change that so that they all look the same? So I don't have to tell people you can click on that object in order to magnify it. Um, so I, I don't, so I, I, I'm not, I'm not entirely following, um, but uh, let's see if I can work it out. Um, so so you've, you've got your 360 view. Um, you've got your hotspots, which you're using just a magnifying glass uh, icon for. Um, but then you said you're also adding other, other um, hotspots and those hotspots are just purely used as for their graphical thing they're just to, to, to show extra things in the room is that right correct so yeah. yeah so when they click on those things it magnifies yeah. them but there's no magnifying glass over that item oh. to let players know that it is a hot spot right okay so you what you could do uh, is you if you could add those ones that are purely there for their visuals and you could put them if you can order them at the bottom so they appear underneath anything else um you can do that in a new editor you can reorder layers um and then you could actually put another hotspot over the top of that that, that first hotspot which could be your um your magnifying glass okay so how do you 
how do you um, edit the layers that you were talking about? Um, oh, sorry, layers is not the right term. Uh, that's what I called them internally, but that's not what we call them. Um, so uh, I, what I mean is the uh, the the hotspots. So um, just a minute, let me uh, let me share my screen again. Okay. Okay, uh, so hopefully everyone can see my screen. Um, and let me just see if I can find uh, a, um, it's gonna be a suitable, um, yeah, let's, let's have a look at this one. This has only got two. Um, so, um, oh, okay, these are, in fact, let me make these into hotspots first. And apologies, I'm, I'm showing you on a flat thing rather than a 360 thing. It's just just what I've got uh, got here at the moment. So you can see that when I we got two hotspots here, and I position them, and, and this uh, this this dark blue one is over the uh, light red one. Um, but I can change their order, so I can go here. I can grab that and move it up here. And now now the uh, this one is is over the top of this one. So when you click on one of those hotspots. Can you click on one so I can see the, um, yeah. So see see where it says image there and it says alternative, add yes. alternative. So what I've got is the first image that I sh that is there, the normal image is the thing, the new thing that I've added to yeah. that. So how do I get my magnifying glass to also be over that image rather than a hover over? Because that magnifying glass is coming up. Now when they hover over the image, but it's not actually seen on the 360 until they hover over it. Okay, yeah. So, so, so you what you what you've got is you've got a single hotspot, and you've got your regular image, and then your your magnifying glass. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. So, what I would do is I would remove the hover image, okay, um, and then I would put create a second hotspot. Set this. So, imagine this red one is the magnifying glass, and I'm, I'm apologies, I don't have a magnifying glass to demo this with. But yeah, if you, you could then set the the image on this one to the magnifying glass and just position it over the first one. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. An alternative is you could just edit the original image in, in your photo editor and put the, um, the magnifying glass on it there. But um, right. but yeah, using two hotspots, I think, gives you a bit of flexibility and allows you to sort of, sort of adjust it in the editor. Okay, perfect. Thanks. No problem. Question from KW Escape. Hi. Um, so Hi. I've played a few of the games, and when I'm playing, if I click on a hotspot to view an image, um, there's a little close button that you have to click in the top left-hand corner. Yeah. Is there a possibility that eventually you could make it so that I could click the escape key on my keyboard to close yes. that? Uh, that is that is a thing that is definitely on my list. Okay, um, cool. Yeah, I, I know it's a it's a fairly fairly minor thing, but it is definitely something that I think would make it a lot lot more pleasant. Yeah. Um, I do also intend to make it so that you can click anywhere sort of off the image on the on the backdrop yes. yeah. and get rid of it that way as well. Um, okay, yeah. good to know. Thanks, Tom. No problem. Another question for Maxine. Yes, um, just a question uh, from a point and click perspective and three hundred and sixty image. I'm just wondering from a best practice perspective. Uh, when, you know, when an action happens and something changes in the room, um, is best practice to have multiple 360 images with the sort of change that happened? Or is there any other sort of ways to make it easy when there's a change so that there's sort of continuity with the game? Yeah. So it's, it's, it is, it's always hard to do because um, you are, um, you are dealing with uh, a photograph that you've taken and it's yeah it's it, it's it's very hard to either get two I get two photos that are, that are close enough that you could easily switch between them um you know they're, they're always going to be slightly different positions uh, um or to or to photoshop into a 360 image is also quite hard um but what a lot of people do um is you can use uh use a hotspot uh without any kind of act click action or anything you can use it purely for its graphical bit um, and you can position it. Now, it doesn't work perfectly because the hotspots are 2D things. And so uh, the, the hotspot is essentially a, um, a yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a 2D item and it's always facing towards you. Whereas the um, 360 is a, is a sphere. And you're looking at the inside of the sphere. So it's never going to look perfect, but I've seen a lot of people use it to very good effect. And I think if you're careful with how you do it, um, and use it sparingly, it can, it can be a good effect and it can work. 
And between that and Photoshop, what would be the, the easier one? Uh, so it's definitely easier to use the hotspots because that just means you can you can hide and show the hotspots as you wish. Um, yeah, so you don't need to do any kind of swapping out of the whole image. Um, also, a, a much more efficient because if you swap out the image, the the uh, 360 image, the players will have to download a new the whole thing again, which you know is is fairly large. Um, one thing I would like to do at some point is to um, is to allow the um, the hotspots to uh, exist in the 3D space a little bit more. Um, so um, we're still always going to be talking about uh, two-dimensional planes kind of fitting onto a sphere, which is not quite, which are not, so they're never going to mesh entirely, but uh, it's definitely possible to do better than we're doing now. It's uh, just going to be really difficult to do. So it's so something that I, uh, I intend to do, but probably it's going to be a while. Thanks. No problem. One of the questions in the chat is, is there an integration with Fair Harbour um, due? Um, I suppose that's a good way to just, uh, we've had quite a few new people join, so it might just be worth mentioning uh, how people can find the roadmap. Yeah, so um, that, that is a good point. Yes, uh, the, uh, the roadmap is um, when you're logged into Telescape, um, it is uh, along the top of the screen. I was going to share my screen again. Um, so uh, you can you can access it by clicking here, um, and then uh, you've got to feature requests. Um, and um, if you, I, I would always try searching first, try to find the feature request you want, and uh, then um, uh, if if that's something you you want, then uh, please please vote it up. Oh no, not it was Fair Harbor. So uh, the answer to Fair Harbor is similar to the answer to um, to, to Zola, um, that uh, that is absolutely something that's planned. Um, that's something that, that uh, we can definitely do. Uh, it's another one that we already, already integrate our other software with. Um, I just, it's purely, uh, if I hear from enough people that they want it, then it will happen sooner. So, uh, so yeah, if, you, if you're if you wanting a Fair Harbor integration, do let me know and do vote it up on the uh, roadmap. Uh, the same with uh, Zola or any other booking system that uh, that you're interested in. A few people have already asked about a text entry box. I think you've answered that, Tom. Uh, Yoda asks about variables in regards to being able to do things like counting, or I'm assuming that also references like inventory items for, um, yeah, I don't know whether you want to cover that. Yeah, um, so um, is, is, Yoda, is Yoda here? If you, uh, if you, if you, if you want to come yeah, on I'm the here. audio. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, so um, so what, what was your question about, uh, about, about counters? Yeah, if it's possible to have some variables, basically, which could yeah. also be a, a timer that I can set a certain amount to. Yeah. So I add or this, um, subtract, but I need to be able to show it somewhere, like a, an overlay or a hotspot or a draggable, basically, that shows the timer or the variable. Yeah. So. Um... So yeah, showing showing. So there's, there's a couple of things there. We we have timers at the moment. So timers you can set to count up or to count down. Um, we don't have a lot of flexibility with how you show timers at the moment. Um, but that that is definitely something that is coming. Um, I intend to allow you to kind of uh, embed a timer into um, into an item, so sort of show it as as you wish to. Um, so that's that's definitely something that's coming. Um, in terms of counters that you might use say for keeping track of score uh, that is something that i have been planning to do um there is a there's a way there's a workaround that works for that at the moment which is um we have the alternative images feature where you can have a hotspot and then it can have lots of images that it cycles through um you can actually use that to kind of keep track of a counter so if you have a, a hotspot with say a 100 images you know the numbers one to 100 you can cycle through that you, you there, are, there are actions that allow you to move to the next one so add, adding one there are actions that let you just skip to a certain one um and often if you want say a score that's actually displayed somewhere then that then those two things work together you can just have a hotspot with, um, at, with, which is representing the score, which people can see, and you flip through the images. But it's possible to have a hotspot that no one can see that's still counting down, counting through images, uh, and then use that in your conditions elsewhere if you've got kind of more complex needs. Oh, um, really? And I, I understand that, that is a, that's a workaround at the moment, but um, yeah. one of the things I'm quite interested to see is, if, is uh, how people make use of that, um, because I think that will uh, inform... Uh, how I do it when I actually add proper counters, which I, I do intend to do. Yeah, yeah, that will work. Yeah, 
I'm planning to have them have a score based on how many hints they used or what, how many time they needed. So at the end of the game, the score can be displayed. Yeah. So I, I would recommend having making your kind of end of game sc uh, screen as an item and having on that a, uh, a hotspot, which is going to represent their score. And then whenever they do something that gets them score, you, in you, you, can, in you can increment that hotspot. Um, and it because it's possible to change the current image of a hotspot even when that hotspot is not on the screen even when it's not on an item that's been shown yet mm -hmm. so you can have you can be you can be incrementing the, the images of this hotspot all through the game and then finally at the end of the game you show the item containing that hotspot and they can see the score that they got yeah 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 that'll work yeah thanks cool. great no problem um, Alex Smith asked in the chat about uh, being able to create, keep a digital checklist for players. So uh, keep a checklist of uh, completed objectives. I assume you have literally just answered that question, but um, uh, I wondered whether, uh, I don't know if Alex is there in audio. Uh, has, 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 has Tom answered that question for you? Um, yes, so um, I'm so sorry. He broke up for the majority of that previous question. Um, oh, okay. So I, I was struggling to hear, but um, basically my question is we are struggling with um, uh, in a digital escape room, if someone solves something in a separate area, a lot of people struggle with how did we get to that point? So our goal is to essentially create a checklist down at the bottom that's an inventory item and always available for people to then go and check. And it'll just essentially when you complete an item, it will then uh, pop up. You just accomplished this by doing this. Yeah, uh, that's uh, that's a very good idea. Um, I've seen that done really, really well before. Um, and you can do that. Um, you can do that using uh, using hotspots. So you can have your your checklist item in the inventory, and uh, let's say that you that's a, that's a that's the each thing is written down, and then next to each thing you can put a check check mark hotspot. But you can make that initially hidden, and then when they complete the thing, you show it. So now the shot now so now the uh, the the check mark is shown. Sure. Uh, the problem that we're running into is we don't want to give people that runs the risk of a uh, large group of people being able to know exactly what's going to happen in order in mm -hmm. the escape room. So our idea was to essentially have a blank slate and then propagate in when they accomplish something, it appears yeah. and it's crossed through. Yeah. But the problem is if they do things out of order, you could see one crossed off thing at the very top and then the next crossed off thing on the bottom of the next page kind of thing. So I yeah, didn't know if yeah. there was an actual function that was being developed or something along those lines that might be able to accomplish that. Yeah, so... Um... There's not there's not really a way of kind of having it do layouts for you. So so yeah, if, if you if you did that, you could absolutely make each of those each of those items like the uh, be completely contained in a hotspot. So the hotspot is not just the check mark; it's actually the entire writing about what they're gonna they, what they've done. But yeah, as you're right that um, that if they do it out of order, they they will sort of, there'll be gaps that will be filled in. Sure. Um, okay. which, which I've seen done in, in some, some ways before and work fine. Uh, and I think it really depends on, on the game. Uh, you, you could also get, try, you could also get a bit clever by having um, uh, hotspots with multiple alternative images and then figuring out which one's next and flipping it to the right one. But that would be quite a lot of work. Sure. Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate your input. No problem. Toby asks, um, he would like to display an unclickable hotspot on top of a draggable. Is there plans to do that? Um, I wondered whether that would be an, ex uh, uh, an idea to show the layering of, of objects and explain. Yeah, uh, so that, that is, um, well, yeah, that's a, you know, that's a good point. Let's, um, let me share my screen. Um, okay, so um, I'm just gonna add a hotspot to this. Um, To this thing so that we can uh oh there we are it's sad uh oh it's huge um so um when you've got uh, a drag drop puzzle you have draggable things so these uh these cards here um can be uh drag and dropped by the drag and dropped by the user uh whereas this is a hotspot so wherever you position it that's where it stays uh, the players can't move it um now um you can uh, change the order of draggables with respect to each other. So I uh, say I want to make that ace of hearts above the uh, the two of spade of, of the clubs, then I can do that. But you can't currently make a hotspot go above a draggable. So a hotspot is at the moment is always underneath a draggable. Um, now the reason for that is because when I did early testing of the draggables feature, 
um, we had um, we had some problems with uh, Dragon Balls getting stuck under hotspots, which was very uh, very uh, annoying, um, and it, you know it, it, would make, it would make games uh, uh, puzzles unsolvable. Um, so uh, my quick fix to that was just to say that hotspots are always underneath uh, underneath Dragon Balls. Dragon Balls always go on top of hotspots. Um, now. Now that this editor is a lot more capable um, and it is actually quite easy to change the order of things, um, I do intend to make it so that um, hotspots and draggables can be reordered uh, in, uh, with respect to each other. Um, that will bring back that possibility that you can get stuff stuck under other stuff. Uh, my intention is probably uh, to allow you to do it, but to show a warning um, so that you can just so you're aware and you can try you can make it so that that doesn't happen. Um, so, um, so yeah, the, my intention is to, is to add that back in. Um, it's just, it's only really been feasible since this new editor has been here, which is, which has only been a week or two. Uh, and I'd have, just haven't got around to doing it yet. Sorry. So that was quite a long, a long winded, um, uh, answer to that question. <laughs> Hi Tom, just, uh, hey, yeah. uh, could you make it so that the fixed hotspot is, um, clickable through? Um, yes. So, um, you may be able to do that at the moment um, by uh, if you if you create a hotspot and make sure that it doesn't have any actions or any pop ups. I believe that should work. All right, I'll try that. I I'm, I'm now doubting myself because I don't actually remember, remember doing that. But, but that is how that is how it's meant to work. <laughs> right, but uh, yeah, I, I need the I need the fixed one on top of the draggable. Um, that, I shall oh, wait. So, sorry. You know, yeah, I, I get what you mean. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Yeah. That's that's not possible at the moment. Um, yes. Yeah. Once once you can reorder them. Yes. The, my intention is that uh, if the draggable doesn't ex itself have any actions on click, then it would allow you to oh, yeah. to click oh, through it. Oh, um, got yeah. uh, the the other thing that uh, the other thing that oh, yeah. is uh, is hopefully coming fairly soon um, is the ability to click through the transparent areas on a on a on a hotspot. Yeah, they're also very useful. Because uh, right now, um, for anyone who doesn't know, um, a hotspot is, is always a rect is always a rectangle, and it will capture clicks anywhere within its rectangle, even if the bit that you click on happens to be uh, transparent. So that's fine if your hotspots happen to be rectangular, uh, but if they're not, it can lead to some weirdness, um, and that's that is something that. Um, I'm working on fixing. Good. Uh, another question from Tom Alcock. Hiya, i um, got two questions again. Um, just wondering if, well, I don't think it is currently possible, but if there's any way we can drag items from an inventory onto a snap point. Um, yeah, uh, that's a very good question. Um, so that will never be possible from the inventory. So uh, the, the bit down the, the back, bit down the, the left hand side, um, because the way that works is that those are those are um, are uh, thumbnails to display bigger things, and it just doesn't quite work to drag those. But um, I know that for many many games, what you actually want to show is show to the user as an inventory is a different thing. You know, it's a, it's a set of items that they can combine with stuff on the screen. Yeah, um, and that is something I am. Uh, in fact, this uh, uh, I keep on saying it, but the, yeah, the feature I the next feature I have plans, the one I'm hoping to release next week. Uh, also makes that possible in in some ways um okay. yeah it's um it's something that um i'm i will be very interested to see what people do with it with this new feature and see i think i think it will make that make that possible but we'll, we'll, we'll see if it's sufficient okay um and the other thing was just the quick thing that i i was using was um in the legacy editor mm -hmm. if you don't upload an icon it just uses that default i icon yeah in the new editor you don't get that yeah, so that that is that's something I might add back as a proper feature. Um, but for now, uh, if you want to get that in the new editor, uh, if you upload any image, um, and then if you if you if I let, let me uh, let me share my screen again and show this because uh, this will make a lot more sense I think when I when I do it. Uh, so yeah, if you can see my screen, uh, so I've uploaded this uh, this hotspot, which is uh, this treasure chest. Uh, if I go to the image here and just uh, delete it. Then, um, oh, let me make the scale a bit bigger again. Okay. Uh, and there we are. That's really useful. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I, 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 um, I, this is something that actually a lot of people have asked for. So I, I didn't know how much, I didn't know there was so much love for the, uh, for the <laughs> default icon. So uh, now that I know that people want it, I will probably add a way of, uh, of getting it without sort of doing that workaround. Perfect. Cool. That's brilliant. Thank you. No problem. 
Um, then we've got a hand raised from Lindsay. Hi, Lindsay. Hello, guys. So I actually asked a couple of questions in the chat, so you can ignore those if you do come across those, because cool. um, one of them has been answered. Uh, but uh, talking about the ability to merge games, I know you can do it if we have some things that we'd like to be put together. Mm -hmm. Is that something that uh, we can do on our side at some point? Yeah, so I, um, my, my intention is to make uh, the, the cut and paste um, better to the point where that will be the thing you'll use. Um, so, so it will be possible to cut and paste any, any aspects of a game into another game. Uh, which I think awesome. will be a, I think will be a lot better than a merge feature because a merge feature is a really blunt instrument. Um, but um, but I, I do have a merge thing, a tool that I can let you use if if, you, if anyone really needs it. I can give them access to it. And the reason I don't don't make that a general access thing is because it doesn't really have safeguards. So it's quite easy to sort of I don't know select the wrong game to merge into. And now you've got sort of a Frankenstein of two games, which is not what you wanted. And it's, uh, yeah, you have to be careful about backing things up, which is uh, which is not a thing I would want in a feature that's sort of generally available. But, uh, Definitely. Okay, awesome. Um, second question was, uh, and I know uh, my business partner had emailed uh, about this before, but I was kind of putting it out there as a general question is you know, for everybody in a way mm -hmm. is uh, for drag and drop puzzles. Um, and I know this is something you've talked about a little bit today already with uh, conditions, but um, for puzzles, uh, a good real world example is you've got a chessboard, for example, mm -hmm. uh, you've got magnet sensors under a few spots and a few of your pieces um, will trigger those magnet sensors. You need four sensors triggered for the puzzle to be correct. It doesn't matter what order they're triggered in mm -hmm. or which piece is on which spot. So kind of a, a very generic, just if all four of these are done, we had looked at doing it with uh, calling codes, but as far as I can tell, once a piece has been removed, there's no way to untrigger that code. So if you um, all four have to be covered at the same time. Oh yeah. So if, so you're you're talking about using codes as a kind of um, a kind of flag uh, to later later check on a condition. Um, yeah. And actually, uh, for doing that kind of thing, what I'd recommend is actually uh, show it using a using a hotspot uh, or possibly uh, an alternate image on a hotspot. And I think that's a much better way of uh, of of getting some state. Um, so you can, uh, if you just wanted to kind of leave a flag, so you know later on, some, so you, which you can check later on, then showing a hotspot is something you can check, and it's also something you can undo. Okay. And lastly, uh, and this is one I put in the roadmap as well a little while ago, and just seeing if there was any other uh, feedback on it, uh, the ability to change thumbnails for something. Um, so you've... Uh, for example, putting a text over a 360 instead of having multiple 360s where you're taking one away and showing them a new one where all it says is updated or new objects just to get, because as people have mentioned, users, uh, sometimes uh, the, the basics of Telescape can be on, beyond people. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yes, so it's, it's not possible to, um, to change thumbnails for items at the moment. Um, you can hide an item and show another item uh, which could work quite well. So mm -hmm. um, I know that's that's not quite the same, but um, but that's that's one one thing you could do. Yeah, we've done that now for a couple of smaller items. So was, initially, the question came up uh, when we had a three sixty with uh, several dozen hot spots and all sorts of stuff, and mm. there wasn't an easy copy paste at that time. So we were thinking, how do we recreate all of this? Right. Okay. Just to let them know that one hotspot has changed so yeah uh that is definitely something we, we we could we could support in the future um yeah yeah I mean, uh, that definitely makes sense awesome all right thank you cheers i didn't know if bob and josh want to jump in yeah i had one more question one of our sure. puzzles is they have to put items in a certain order mm -hmm. and one of the things that i'm just kind of curious about because 99 percent of the time that's what i want them to do is is when they put it in there they're like oh i'm not sure I'd move it out of the way and sometimes, is there a way that if they put that uh, draggable into the right snap point, it is locked? It cannot be moved at that point? Um, so there isn't at the moment, uh, but that is something I'm going to add. Um, so I um, yeah, lock, lock the snap points. Um, 
Uh, yeah, um, that's definitely something that I think is needed. Uh, right now, um, what people usually do when they want to achieve that effect is they actually create a hotspot at the position of the snap point with the same graphic as the draggable, and they hide the draggable and show the hotspot. So it's, yeah, it's not ideal because, yeah, it, you know, especially if there are multiple places it could go, it starts to blow up a bit in the, the amount of possibilities, but it does allow you to do some of that kind of stuff. Yeah, one of the funniest things we saw is that people are just about, you know, the person is just about to put the last piece in and then someone else yeah. on their team goes, oh, and starts moving things. Yes. And you're just like, and the, the guy, the, the person that was just about to put the piece in is gets upset. They're like, no, and then they're having to figure it all out again. But anyways. I, uh, I've experienced yeah. that as a player. So, uh, so yeah. <laughs> so I, I definitely know. I definitely know about it. Sometimes I feel like that's part of the fun. But, uh, but yes, I, I agree. There needs to be some way to lock it once the puzzle is actually over and done. Question from the chat. Um, is there a way to limit the number of players uh, stroke connections in a game key? Uh, so you could create a different version of the game for different group sizes? Um, there isn't, but uh, that is definitely something that I, I have planned. That's something that, uh, that I, I know is needed. Um, I, um, I need to take a little bit of time with it uh, to make it work because um, uh, counting the number of people playing is is actually quite hard um because people do things like they try like they try it in one browser and then it, you know they've got a, they've got a um ad blocker so there's problems so they switch to another browser um and you don't want to count those as two people because it's just one person trying to find the best place to play um but um probably what i will add is a way to limit number of concurrent players so you know, someone could could log out from one thing and log in to log, and log in with something else, but they couldn't do it at the same time. But uh, yeah, that's definitely my intention to do that at some point. Um, I, I know it needs doing. Okay, um, I'm hoping I'm catching. I've, I'm, I'm making sure that we get answers to all of the questions in the chat. But I've basically, reached the bottom of the chat. Uh, so Joe, Joey Marcello uh, asks: um, Is it possible to have like a number pad to enter a code or sort of an input field? Um, so um, I, I mentioned before that, that uh, the, input, the input fields, so sort of text entry fields that you can embed in an item are something I have planned. And they, they would operate very similarly to the current code box, except you'd actually be able to embed them in an item um, and limit them to only be for the answers for that particular item. So that is something I plan to do. Um, so it, is, it is also possible to build um, build sort of code code pads uh, using collections of hotspots, which quite a few people have done. Um, yeah, that, that's what I was 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 what I was talking about, like a pin pad, like mm -hmm. um, pushing. You know, the hotspot. You push the one, then you push the five, then you push the three. And if they're pushed in that order, um, and, and there are, I, I've, I've talked to a couple of people online, and they are willing to either teach or sell it in in a layer type of form. Um, and your, all of your instructional videos have been amazing in teaching people how to do just the basics. So thank you for that. But, uh, I, I was just wondering sure if there was going to be a, a kind of a rollout anytime soon that kind of helped the, the rest of us along. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's definitely, um, going to get easier uh, to do that. In fact, I did, I was working just this morning on a, um, on a, uh, a, a safe, uh, Thing. So if I'm gonna I'm gonna show it now. So Carl actually built um, built a safe uh, as a little demo um, a little while ago. Um, so yeah, let me just share my screen again. Um, so um, yeah, this is this is built by Carl. Uh, but uh, here we have a, a safe, and I can uh, see that the the uh, puzzle here is uh, it's uh, six. Uh, 45 so 1845 is the uh i'm gonna put it i'm gonna do it wrong first oh yeah uh, oh, and now i'm gonna do it correctly and there we go um so yeah that is possible to build those kind of things at the moment um now i'll i'll show you what this this one carl built in fact carl built this just before i added the um the multiple um the multiple images feature. And in fact, the reason that he built this was because we were planning to do that. And I wanted to get a good baseline for how complicated it is now and how simple it can be later. Um, so right now it involves a whole load of codes. And uh, if we edit here, um, so a whole load of, <laughs> of hotspots as well. Um, now this, it's already possible to make this much, much simpler. 
Um, so right now uh, there is like a separate hotspot for each digit, which uh, yeah is is uh, is a lot. Uh, now of course you would you would just go and add alternative images for each for each number, so that reduces the number by the number by ten already. Um, yeah, I, I was trying to do it in that type of complex way, and it got yeah. way over my head because I was doing ands and ors and. Yeah, yeah. I am. Um, in fact, I um, let me um, yeah. So I, I, it's definitely possible to do that a lot, a lot simpler now. And what I was, what I was working on today was um, uh, was a demo of doing that um, with uh, using using Carl's assets, but basically simplifying it with the with the new the new features that are now available. It's still not super simple. Um, it's quite it's very simple now to do a like a combination lock. Uh, where you're clicking on each item to cycle through them. Um, in fact, I, I made a video about that recently. Um, so if you check out the videos, there's, there's how to do that. Um, yeah, I, I saw that. That was awesome. Yeah. And uh, thank, thank you again. Like everything you've been doing is amazing. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I, I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, so so the, the the one thing that's hard with the safe is that is that, is that those same buttons have to have to kind of uh, first operate one digit, then operate the next digit. Um, and what I was planning on doing uh, as a way of um, of making that a bit simpler and reducing the number of codes needed, as I intended to have a um, a hidden hotspot, a hidden number, which just cycled through the the, the current the current digit index. Um, so uh, it would start off at one, and that means that next time you hit the button, it's gonna it's gonna put it's gonna change the first digit, and then it would increment to two. And now the next time you hit the button, it's gonna change the second digit. And there's still a fair amount of actions and codes you've got to do then, but it reduces it a little bit. You know, you can just have a condition that says, "Is the current digit this?" Cool, update update that digit. Um, but uh, but yeah, definitely uh, doing that um, was what was one of the things that, that was reminding me how badly I need to uh, improve the um, actions and conditions and just make them yeah cut and paste on them and that kind of stuff. So uh, yeah, it's always good to, to for me to try and build puzzles because it uh, it definitely makes me makes me. Uh, uh, realize the importance of um, of improving the UX and, and making things easier. Uh, so a little bit further up the chat, uh, Lindsay asked about um, merging games. Uh, what I mean, I'm assuming that that means uh, taking groups off in different parts of the game and then bringing them back together. Um, uh, is is that uh, have we got a timeline on when that might be available? Yeah, so so this this is something I'm I'm hoping that people will be able to do um, with the uh, the feature that I'm, I've got planned for next week. Um, it's not specifically for that, but but I think it will allow people to I think it will allow people to do that quite well. Um, so yeah, um, definitely uh, keep an eye out. Um, I am. Um, hoping to release it early next week but um yeah it's uh whenever i whenever i say things like that uh, other stuff comes along and uh everything goes uh, goes wrong but uh yes i um in, in, unless i unless i get majorly distracted it that will be available next week and i would and one of the videos i plan to do using that uh would be showing splitting up players and, and showing them different things toby asks uh, can can he embed a gallery in a drag drop puzzle or image um, <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, it depends, depends how you mean, um, but you can construct a gallery. Um, in fact, um, uh, David at uh, Escape One Alcove uh, did a, uh, a really nice one uh, using, um, using multiple images on a hotspot, um, which I think he posted a video of uh, underneath my, my last feature announcement. Um, so yeah, that, that's, that would be a way of doing it at the moment. Tom, oh. Um, oh. Hey, hi, just regarding that gallery you've just mentioned, uh, we oh, did yeah. mine a flaw in that after spending all that time making it look so pretty, David was very disappointed, but uh, at the moment that gallery um, doesn't work because it changes the item for everyone instead of just that player, but with your rollout next week I think it will. Yes, yeah, and I, I know, and now that I know that I've now promised that this rollout next week will fix a lot of very, very different uh, problems. Oh yes, we're um, all but, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's it is actually it's a it's a fairly simple thing. Um, I'm, I'm the reason I decided to do it was because it's that it it seems to solve all, a bunch of disparate problems, which I always like in a feature if it can be useful in multiple different ways. But yes, one of those ways I think will be making. Uh, galleries like the one that David made um, work a little bit better and be able to work separately for each player. 
Awesome. Uh, Adam asks uh, whether we, you'll, you'll do a video uh, once the, the safe uh, puzzle can, is, is released. We'll try, I'm assuming we're going to try and produce yeah. some, uh, some useful tutorial assets. Yeah, it, it's definitely my intention to make a video with the safe thing. Um, I, um, I might wait until a couple of extra features are in before I do. Um, because I like to, when I make the videos, I like to do the, I like to make the videos on things that I can demonstrate in, you know, under five minutes, ideally. Um, so I have a few things I want to add to make it a little bit easier um, so that I can then demo it uh, in, in, a, in a simple video. Um, but uh, so yeah, um, that, that will come. Uh, if anyone um, is particularly interested in that, um, yeah, do, do email and uh, let me know because it's always good to know what, what, uh, what you're waiting for. Benito at Durham Escape Rooms asks, will there be a way to offer combination locks? Um, I'm assuming you're talking about more like a, a marketplace. Uh, yeah, so there are, there are uh, various people already doing that. Um, so um, I, I know that uh, Daniel at Help Us Escape has, uh, will, will sell you locks, including the graphics or, or, the, or, the, or the, 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 the codes for them. I think that uh, David and Katie at uh, Escape One Algarve uh, also have those and uh, potentially other people who are, um, uh, would, would as well. So yeah, there are, there are definitely people at the moment who will, who can sell you um, whatever bits you need to make those kind of puzzles. Uh, Thomas and Carl, sorry not to belabor this, but I'm just wondering, like if it's something customizable that someone needs, I, I understand that avenue, but if there was like just a generic way to add that, that would then populate into the code section, all the necessary codes needed, and then people can go in and adjust them for their specific combinations. So it's yeah. just a, an, an additional add. So instead of adding an image, you say add combination lock, and then it just populates into the code section everything that you would need. Yeah. Um, no, so so I um, this was asked earlier, and um, and I would very much like to add a kind of um, uh, sharing asset store kind of thing where people can either sell or uh, just share uh, items and people can just put them into their games. Uh, the way people who are selling them right now are doing it is if you buy one of these things, one of these locks off, off someone who's selling it, uh, they will transfer to you a game profile that just includes that lock. Uh, you can then go into that game profile, copy all the bits from the lock, paste it into your game. So uh, it's a little bit more involved than it should be at the moment. Um, uh, that is my, definitely my intention to build a completely smooth experience for that. Uh, but it is possible right now to, 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 buy a, to buy a lock off someone and integrate it into your game and, and then customize it as you, as you need to. Bob and Josh ask where uh, we can locate uh, David's video. Um, it's on the Facebook page uh, in the comment section um, of the uh, latest alternate image uh, for hotspots and draggables um, announcement that Tom did a few days ago. Yeah, in the comment gonna, section, it's there. I'm going to see if I can um, paste that in, the link to that into the chat. There we are. Uh, I've just pasted into the Zoom chat uh, a link to my announcement of the previous feature. And if you look on the, the uh, comments for that, uh, you will see um, a, uh, a video of. Um, of a couple of the things that uh, David at Escape on Algarve has made. Um, I also believe that they have a new website uh, with information about, information about their Telescape services that includes uh, a much larger video with a lot of the stuff they've made, which, um, yeah, is really cool. And I would, I would recommend uh, seeking out. As, uh, so we've got no more hands raised, and I think this is going to be the last question. Um, oh, um, Katie just uh, posted that the link to that site I mentioned into the chat, so uh, you can go click, click it there. Sorry, Carl. Uh, no problem. Uh, so Tom Orcock asked, is it possible to pop up an item um, when a draggable is completed or a code is entered rather than just clicking a hotspot? Uh, no. Um, so um, the pop-up thing, which is, a, 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 is an option that's just sort of on, on, uh, on hotspots, uh, you can't currently do that from other places. Um, that is an omission. That is something that that, that will be fixed. Um, it's that's just a that's a feature that existed before actions, which is hasn't quite caught up with the new reality yet, um, and it, it will do. <laughs> oh, and um, there's one more. I just noticed one more question from from Yoda, uh, which is um, any way to move a draggable by code? Uh, that is actually something that I am planning on doing very very soon. Um, that's uh, something that I really feel is needed. 
Um, probably at the moment, um, my, my intention for that feature would probably be to um, allow you to uh, move a draggable to a, to, a, to a snap point. So we probably won't allow you to sort of move it by pixel amounts, uh, but you'll be able to say, move this, this draggable to this snap point. I think we're at the end of the questions. Awesome. Um, well, uh, that's, um, that's, uh, that's fantastic. I've, uh, yeah, I've really enjoyed answering them. Um, yeah, thanks cool. so much for, for everyone who uh, everyone who showed up. Um, if, if there's interest, I will probably uh, do these things again. Um, do one of these things again. I might do it with, with uh, some other people in the future. So I might, might have some special guests and that kind of thing. Um, but, uh, but yeah, um, please do let me know uh, if you have any thoughts on, on this, you know, if this is something you, you'd do again, if um, if uh, you have any, any thoughts about how it could be better, um, I'll, um, you could either mention here or um, or on the uh, reply to the email or comment on the Facebook post, uh, all, all good ways. Are you going to make this available like so we can rewatch it on YouTube or something? Um, I, uh, I might do, uh, we've recorded it. Um, it's a matter of, uh, editing it, um, and m putting it into a form that would actually be useful. Um, I'll, I'll take a look at that tomorrow and see, uh, see how well it recorded and, and how well that might work. Cool. Um, so yeah, I, I think, uh, I think that's probably, probably everything. Um, so, uh, yeah, once again, thank you so much for everyone who came and, um, I will, uh, I'll see you next time.